check one, two. One, two. Check one, two. Okay, cool. Uh, they want to use that, so is that going to be there? All right, I'll let him know. Well, a very warm welcome to you this morning. Welcome to NIAC. My name's Josh. Uh, we're going to get started in our service in just a moment. As you take a seat, uh, isn't it great to be able to gather in the name of our risen and reigning Lord, Jesus Christ? 
And as we come together, um, some of you may be coming with uh, joyous hearts, and, and some of us may be coming with heavier hearts, uh, perhaps after the events of this weekend. Uh, so we're going to be praying for some of those things a bit later in the service. But uh, right now, we're going to lift up our voices in song, and can I invite you to stand as you're able? We're going to sing two stong- songs, and we're going to start with Grace Alone. Let's stand and sing. I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I hear your call But Father, you worked your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne But Father, you loved me still And you loved me for you laid the world's foundation you predestined to adopt me as your own. You have raised me up so high above my station. I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. home to seek out the lost you knew the great and terrible cost but Jesus your face was set I worked my fingers down to the bone but nothing I did could ever atone but Jesus you paid my debt by your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you died and I might reap what you have sown. And you rose and I might be a new creation. I am born again by grace and grace in darkness all of my life I never knew the day from the night that's near as you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own head full of rocks a heart made of stone but spirit you moved in me at your touch my sleeping spirit was awake Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken Heaven citizen by grace and grace alone So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone I will run the race by grace and grace alone grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace
Let's pray. Our glorious Saviour, our risen and reigning King, we thank you for the privilege that it is to come into your presence and to get a bit of a foretaste of what that will be like for those ages and ages. Father, we ask that as we come today, please would you still our hearts as they may be distressed or distracted. We ask that you might do a work in your people today Please, Lord, as your name is lifted up, as your word is read, as prayers are offered, and as the word is preached, please, Father, would you change hearts and minds today. We ask, Lord, um, that as as we sing and as we do these things, Lord, may you take the worship of sinners and turn it into a sweet smell in your nostrils, Lord. Would you do this by the power of your spirit? In Christ's name, amen. Please take a seat. Well, if you've uh, just walked in during the songs, I want to extend a a warm welcome to you this morning. Uh, My name's Josh. I'm part of the Moore College mission that you've hosted over the last week. And on behalf of the team, I just wanted to say a real big thank you to you all. We've really enjoyed our time here. Uh, It's been a lovely mission, so thank you for having us. I wanted to also extend a special welcome if you're new or visiting for the first time. We're really glad that you've made it to church today. We're, we'd love to get to know you a bit more over a, a cup of coffee after the service if you're able. So please do stick around. Kids are a big part of our church here at NIAC. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to invite the kids down the front and David's going to come up and he's going to give a kid's talk. So kids, why don't you come down the front? Hello, good morning everyone. Hi kids. How are you guys going? You can come nearer. I've got stuff that I want to show you. Look, I brought some special things in this big blue bag that I want to show you. But before I open the bag and show you some special things, I have a question for you, okay? Now, I want each one of you to think of something that you really, really, really love a lot. Okay, can you think of something that you really, really, really love a lot? It could be a favorite toy you have, or 
a really, really awesome book that you just love your mummies and your daddies to read it over and over and over again. Or it could be a favorite painting or drawing that you did or a craft you did at school, okay? So think of something that you really, really love. Okay, who's thought of something? Anyone? Okay. Can I ask you, what's something that you really love a lot? Um, the Lego set of the Republic gunship. Wow, is that Star Wars? Yeah. yeah, that sounds really awesome. I wish I had that. Okay. <laughs> what's something favorite you really love a lot? My dog. Your dog, yeah. One more person. Anyone? You? Yeah. What's something that you really love a lot? My dog. Your dog as well, yeah. Okay. Now, I have another question. When we love something a lot, when you love something a lot, would you want to keep it in a corner and hide it so that no one can see it? Or would you like to bring it out and show it to everyone and tell everyone about how awesome it is? The second one, right? I think when we love something a lot, we want to show it to everyone. Well, I have here in this bag some things that my son and daughter really love, okay? And I'm sure they'll love to show it to you. What do you think I'm going to bring out? I don't have a dog, but <laughs> what's this? It's a toy keyboard, and this is my son's favorite thing. You know why he loves it a lot? He loves it a lot because you can play music on it. Check out the sick beats. Yeah, every morning, he'll play this and wake the whole family up, okay? This is what I wake up to every morning. And he loves it so much that he always just loves to show this toy to me, even though I've seen it a thousand times. He brings it over to me in his little hands. He walks over to me and he does this. He says, Joe! He can't really speak yet. Yeah? So that's his way of saying, Dad, check out how awesome this keyboard is. And he doesn't just show it to me, he shows it to everyone. He shows it to his aunties, he shows it to his grandma, he shows it to his grandpa, he shows it even to people he don't know. When strangers come into our home to visit, he'll show it to them. Now, I'm going to show you my daughter's favorite thing. It's not a toy, but, oops, what is this? Oh, yeah, look, we've got Elsa here. That's right. This is not just any dress. It's a special princess dress from Frozen, right? This is Princess Anna. My daughter, she loves wearing this dress everywhere she goes because she wants everyone to see it. When we go out to the park and she meets strangers and strangers come up and say hi to her, you know what she'll do? She'll be wearing this dress and she'll pull her dress like that so that people can notice. And she does a little twirl in the skirt. And she wants everyone to see her dress. That's what happens when we love something so much, right? We want everyone to see it. It doesn't matter whether they are tall or short. It doesn't matter whether they are big or small. It doesn't matter whether they are young or old. We just want everyone to see it because we love it so much. And it's the same with God as well. You know, God has someone he really loves a lot. Not something, but a person. Can you guess who that is? Jesus, that's right. Jesus is always the right answer, right? It's Jesus. It's his son, Jesus, because Jesus died and rose again to forgive us of our sins. And God wants everyone all over the world to hear about Jesus he wants people from everywhere in the world, people from Australia, people from the UK, from China, from Malaysia. Can you think of any other countries? America. America, that's right. God definitely wants people from America to hear about Jesus. And in fact, in the Bible, there's a story about a man from a country called Ethiopia. Anyone of you heard of Ethiopia before? No? It's not that big? Yeah, well, God wants everyone from everywhere to hear about Jesus. And so in this story, God sent a man called Philip on a special mission to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus because he's now never heard about Jesus before. 
And when the man heard about Jesus, he was so happy, he rejoiced, and he followed Jesus that day, and he was saved. Oh, isn't that amazing? Thank God that he wants everyone to hear about Jesus, and thank God that God doesn't just keep Jesus in a corner. He sends Jesus into our world, and he sends people to tell us about Jesus so that we can be saved. All right, that's the end of our kids' spot. I'm going to get Andrew up, and Andrew's going to tell us where we are going. Thanks, David. Okay, some of the kids will know where they're going, but there's some new kids, so let me just explain. If you're, we have a kids' program on today, but it is school holidays, so youth are staying in the building. Um, ca- so preschool to year five, it's still year five, isn't it? are heading out the back door with Megan, who is there waving. Um, We have two creche areas, one on this side, one up the back. If you've got little ones, please feel free to kind of be there with them, move between them, whatever. While the kids are going out and getting sorted, why don't we just take a moment to say hello to all the people around us. Okay, um, I'm going to grab your attention once again. So, not all of you will know me. I'll introduce myself. My name's Andrew. I'm the rector of this church. Um, And let me add my welcome to Josh's. You're really welcome here, especially if this is your first or second or third time. We're so glad you're here. We hope you have a lovely morning. Please stay for morning tea afterwards and get to know some people Um, If you want to get in touch with us, there are a whole bunch of ways to do that. Uh, On the back of the sheet you got on the way in are the email addresses for the staff. You can feel free to contact us. There's also, there normally is, but there is not today, which is interesting, a QR code saying contact us. That's dropped off, so can I just point you to our normal uh, contact details? You can call the office. um, You can send an, actually an email is normally more effective. Uh, You know, please do get in touch And that's a great thing for me to pursue this week, what happened to the QR code. There you go. Um, But it is in the pews, actually, and on the welcome cards. There's a form on our website you can go to, and you could just say, I'm new here, or I'd love you to pray for this, or I'd like to join us, a connect group or something like that. We would love to hear from you. So just a few things to draw to your attention. The first is I just want to say thank you to everybody who made the 150th celebrations happen. Wasn't that fantastic if you were here, Um, and even if you weren't. Wasn't it great? Um, It was a really wonderful celebration, and it was a huge team effort. Um, And I'm hoping to send an email of thanks at some point, kind of going through everybody who helped, but there are a lot. So for now, I just want to say a huge thank you, uh, especially, though, um, to Marcel Rogers and Megan Havland, uh, without whom this really wouldn't have happened. They put in an enormous amount of work. Um, There's lots of others who did a lot, but I just want to single them out and say thank you so much, guys. Wasn't it a wonderful celebration? And what a joy to kind of be able to hear the longer story of our church and give thanks to God for what he's been doing. Um, You could catch, if you you missed it, you could catch up on the service on the live stream really easily. Just go to to our YouTube channel and go back and have a look. Not the same as being there, um, but still good. I also want to say a big thank you to the Moore College team who've been here this week. Um, So there's been a team of students. Those students spend most of their time doing, you know, Greek and Hebrew and being in the library and tapping on the computer. And they did a lot of work this week 
for us, helping us kind of fix up our Erskineville site. Some of you will remember that uh, two trees were poisoned there. We don't know by whom. Last year, it created a huge headache. It also, even after the trees were removed, created an enormous pile of gross kind of dirt. Um, that, was, that was what we were welcoming people to the site with. Uh, so the team have done a lot of work uh, this week, pulling that apart, and that's what it looks like now. And it looks really fantastic. Um, it would have looked... It would have looked better if I hadn't left my jumper there. Sorry about that. Um, but I just, that's not all they've done. They've actually spent a lot of time going around the neighborhood, knocking on doors, giving them, we made these cards which have seeds embedded in them. You can just plant the card so there's no waste. Uh, advertising our new Erskineville service this afternoon and just letting people know about the church. Um, they've helped run different events. They have shown real humility and grace and energy, they put in a lot of energy into this stuff, and I, I, I could not, I, I didn't expect it, them to be this helpful, honestly. I expected them, I expected them to be nice people, thoughtful people, but they have been, you guys have been a huge blessing. So we are really grateful for you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, let's give them another clap. Thanks, guys. Uh, one of their number, Andrew, will be preaching to us later on, and Josh is leading the service, so thanks, guys. Okay, just a few quick announcements. Our next Pupil Free Day is coming up on Monday, April the 29th, so that's a, that's a, a day that kids can't go to school and parents don't know what to do with them. We got, we're running a program, 8.30 till 5. The last bit is watching a movie you can pick up whenever you want. It's for K to 6, $15 per child or $30 for a family, um, so if you've got two children, it's not that good, but, you know, it's, 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 that's the best we can do. If this is a really good program, can I just encourage you, if you have thought about taking some time off and helping Megan to run this, now is the time to let her know and get involved in helping. Um, even if you don't want to help on the day or you're not able to, Megan would love some help with the setup and pack up. So that's kind of often on the Sunday night before, on the Monday evening after, uh, if you are able to help, could you send her an email today? Her email address is on the back of the sheet, or could you just talk to her afterwards? She would love to hear from you. And it's a Harry Potter theme. There you go. That's, that's what that is about. Um, if you would like to join us for prayer, this is just a regular reminder. We have a weekly prayer meeting Tuesday morning at 7.30. Um, this week, I think we'll take some time especially to pray about the people uh, from Bondi Junction. I'll lead us in a prayer uh, as well for that. But we, we often pray for things in the world as well as just things on our hearts. So join us on Tuesday mornings if you would like to. Um, and that's the, that's, the, that's the QR code. That's where it went. It went onto the screen. So before we move on to this, on for the rest of our service now, I'm just going to lead us in a brief prayer uh, after the events of yesterday. If you don't know what they were, y y you'll find out. Um, so let us pray. God of powerful comfort and gentle strength, be near to us as we grieve the attack in Bondi Junction yesterday. We beg you for comfort and strength for the families and friends of the people murdered and injured. We beg you for healing and good help for those who are in hospital now, for skill and courage for those tending to them, and for wisdom for all those seeking to respond in various ways. We thank you for the courage of those who protected people yesterday, and especially for the officer who brought an end to the violence. Oh Lord, how lost we are. How we long for your glory and goodness to fill the earth. We put our trust in you this morning, and our hearts go out to those who need care. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I've talked a bit about the Moore College team. We're now going to meet one of them. I'll hand back to J Josh, I think. Josh, yeah. Yeah, and as we move towards the sermon, um, it's going to be great for us to reflect on God's goodness. Um, particularly, we're going to hear from Rosie. So can I invite Rosie up? Rosie's going to share uh, what God has done in her life. Thanks, Rosie. Good morning. As Josh said, my name is Rosie and I'm part of the Moore College Mission team. And it's my joy to share with you this morning how I became a Christian. I'm very thankful that I grew up in a Christian family and my parents showed me that faith was their priority. Um, we would read the Bible at dinner 
and I remember missing birthday parties that were on Sunday morning being absolutely devastated. Um, but I was a pretty compliant kid, and I had friends at church, so I was happy to go along. But to me, God was just an old, wise man in the sky. I am a middle child, and I, when I was younger, I felt that identity very strongly. My older sister was very smart. People used to say they expected her to be prime minister one day. My younger sister was very good at sport. She'd get into representative teams. And I was absolutely average at both. And I felt my lack of excellence and midness and tried to fill that gap um, by being the social one and the family peacekeeper. But it wasn't a super fulfilling identity. When I was about 13, I read Romans chapter 5, verse 8, which says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I remember thinking, for me? Jesus died for me? I had my back turned to God, even though I was distinctly average. I was sure there was absolutely nothing I had done or could do to deserve this. I knew that I was sinful and actively didn't deserve it. So I understood the goodness of grace and the undeserved but extravagant love of God. I wanted to respond to this love with my whole heart. And my understanding of God went from being a distant old man to my father who I knew I was precious to and who I wanted to live for. So I kept trying to live more like Jesus every day. And God kept pouring out his grace on me as I kept sinning and forgetting God and relying on myself and then kept remembering how much I needed him and how much better his love was for me than anything else I could find in this world. I became thankful for my parents for the example they set of prioritizing their faith, even for making me miss the birthday parties. And my averageness mattered a lot less because I no longer found my identity in comparing myself to my sisters. God is so good, and I'm so thankful he chose me to meet him. I'm so thankful that I get to be his daughter, not through anything I have done, but through what he has done for me. I'm going to pray now and thank God for that good news, and then Becky is going to come up and continue in prayers. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you that you demonstrated your love for us by sending your son Jesus to die for us, even while we were sinning. Thank you for your abundant grace in this, and please help us to keep striving to live more like your son Jesus every day. Amen. Thanks so much, Rosie. I'm going to lead us now in prayers inspired from the words of Psalm 33. Please pray with me. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. O great God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to you be all honour and might and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Loving Heavenly Father, there is so much to give thanks for in how you have been at work in this community, not least for how you continue to grow and transform us through your word. Thank you for sustaining us through a joyful yet busy season of church life together. From the AGM and Farewell of Kez through Easter, our 150th celebrations, the Moore College mission, and this afternoon's official launch of our ERCO congregation. Thank you for the way in which, following your example in Jesus, we have served together alongside one another with thankfulness, joy, and humility. For the creativity, energy, perseverance, and hope with which we as a community have undertaken the small and large tasks that have made up the preparation and execution of so many events. May you take our labours and bear much fruit for your glory. In particular, this morning we bring before you this afternoon's launch of ERCO. 
May yesterday's community barbecue have piqued the interest of passers-by and the clean-up works that have been done on site make the space a welcoming environment. But even more than this, Lord, may you be working in the hearts of the launch team to be expansive, warm and hopeful that many would come to join them and hear the good news of your grace. And would you work in the hearts of those who do not yet, yet know you, calling them to yourself, that they may come and be saved. Please, Lord, may your spirit be at work in Erco and bear much fruit for your glory. Amen. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Father in heaven, we have so much to give thanks for, yet also so much to grieve. As we look inside our own hearts and homes, but also further afield, we are confronted by sin and sickness, suffering and pain. From sickness, loss and heartbreak to news of wars and massacres across the seas. From the horrendously difficult conditions that women giving birth in places of poverty experience to the tragic events at Bondi yesterday closer to home. Lord, have mercy. As we contemplate these things, we cannot help but sense that things are not as they are supposed to be. Please help us in the midst of our grief to wait in hope for you. We pray this same prayer today for our link missionary, Rebecca, as she finally reaches the tail end of six weeks of severe illness. Thank you that it seems the worst has passed, for the availability and effectiveness of medical care and for your gracious hand through both the prayers and practical care of fellow workers, local colleagues, and partners and supports further away. Please, Lord, grant Rebecca ongoing recovery and strength to serve overseas, protection against further illness, and courage to continue to step into costly situations for the sake of being present and bearing witness. Grant her hope and bear much fruit for your glory. Amen. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Almighty God, you have given your only son to be for us, both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavor to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. May we more and more become a community that is deeply and beautifully shaped by the good news of Jesus holding it out to those around us with confidence, gentleness, and joy. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And may we bear much fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. In a moment, we're going to hear from God's word, and after that, we're going to hear uh, Andrew bring us the sermon. But before we do, um, we're going to confess... Um, we're going to have our next song, and we're going to have a confession of faith after that. So uh, as we move towards that, would you please stand, um, and would you join in song for the next song? Thanks. My worth is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly wounds of love at the cross. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in him no other, my soul is satisfied in him alone.
As summer flowers we fade and die, fame, youth, and beauty hurry by. But life eternal calls to us at the cross. I will not boast in wealth or might or human wisdom's fleeting light, but I will boast in knowing Christ at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in him no other, my soul is satisfied in him alone. To wonders here that I confess, my worth and my unworthiness. My value fixed, my ransom paid at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him no other, my soul is satisfied. In Him alone, I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied in Him alone. While we remain standing, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to confess our faith with people of all kinds across the ages. And so as we hear the Bible reading, we're going to hear how God saves all kinds of people. And right now, we're going to confess our faith uh, with all those who have done so across the world and across the ages. So will you, will you confess with me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a seat. Tim from our mission is going to come up, and Tim's going to read the Bible to us. Thanks, Tim. This morning's reading... Uh, is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. And if you're following along in the church Bibles, it's on page 890. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? 
So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of Scripture that the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out up the, of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, we'll now have Andrew from our mission team come up and explain God's word. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew, and it is a pleasure to be with you here this morning. Um, it has been a pleasure to be with you here all week. It's been such a wonderful time together. Uh, we've come along to a few of the celebrations of the 150th service, um, and we've been mostly down at Erskineville, getting that place ready for the launch this afternoon, uh, and we've been doing a fair bit of gardening, but we've been going out into the suburbs uh, to invite people along to the service. We've been walking the streets, we've been knocking on people's doors, and I don't know whether you've ever done some door knocking before, but for me personally, I find it so terrifying. It is so scary because you, you're coming into their space. Around here, there's gates to open up, and so you, you open up the gate, figure out how to do that, and you walk up to the door, and you're looking around, and there's this old doorbell that you're not quite sure if it works, so you kind of push it, and you don't really hear anything, and you're wondering, do I knock on the door? Do I push it again? I don't know. But then you hear the dog barking, and you're like, oh no, like the owner's going to be so mad that we've set the dog off. And then you hear them kind of walking towards the door, and you're just wondering, what am I going to say? Like, what's going to happen here? What's their reaction going to be to this? And they open the door, and you, you just have to kind of start speaking, because from their point of view, they're expecting the Amazon delivery driver or their friends are going to rock up any moment and here you are just kind of offering a seed card to them. It's terrifying. It's so scary. Thankfully, the vast majority of people were really thankful for the little seed cards. There are a couple of people who were, you know, as soon as they heard we were from the church, they just kind of shut the door and off we went to the next house. You go out and you do it again. Why would we do that? <laughs> I found myself asking that question a couple of times. Why am I doing this? Why am I willingly putting myself through this? But that's not the only time we may have thoughts like that. Maybe it's sitting around a family dinner table and we hear from a family member something and we, just, we get that sense that maybe we should invite them along to church. Maybe we should direct this conversation towards Jesus. What if they don't respond well? What if they do kind of respond well, and how often should you invite them along to something else? It's, it's scary sometimes. Why do we do those things? Well, the story that we're looking at this morning gives us confidence. It gives us confidence in those moments where we feel nervous, where we feel afraid. Because in this story, we see that God plans for all kinds of people to meet Jesus and rejoice. That is God's mission. That's why we call it, you know, Mission Week at college, because we're out on this mission to let people know that God plans for all kinds of people to meet Jesus and rejoice. And this morning, we're just going to quickly break that down into four parts, as you can probably see on your outline there. First of all, how does God accomplish His mission? How does the mission succeed? Well, the mission succeeds because God is actively working by His Spirit. 
God is actively working by His Spirit. Let's see this in the story before us from verse 26. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. God sends a messenger to Philip with an explicit instruction. And I don't think we should miss how weird this instruction is, because if it wasn't for this specific angel of the Lord, then I doubt Philip would have been in this specific place at this time. Just before this event, Philip was in a big Sumerian city, and he was doing really great stuff. It was really successful there. He told many people about Jesus, and so many people believed. There was this massive success. What's next for him? I mean, it would, it would be like a, a big, famous preacher comes to Australia, comes to Sydney, and fills out stadiums with people hearing him. It would be like if he came and there was this great move of God in the city. Thousands of Sydney siders come to believe. What should the next move be? What should he do next? Maybe meet with some of the key church leaders, maybe visit some of the churches around Sydney, maybe go somewhere else to do the exact same thing in another big city. Well, that's not what we see Philip do here right away. No, Philip was sent to a desert road leading out of Jerusalem. It would be like if there was this revival in Sydney and then the famous preacher goes and hitchhikes on a highway leading out of Sydney, just hoping for a car to pick him up and maybe he can have a good chat with them. Like, that's, that's a bit bizarre that he goes from this big, massive success in this city and now he goes to this desert road. But Philip does it because God is actively in control. God doesn't stop with that instruction. In verse 29, we're told outright, the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. And then this man in the chariot just, just happens to be reading this specific section of Isaiah. And then look, there just happens to be some water that they can baptize the man in. God is totally in control of this whole event preparing Philip and this man to meet in this way. And we see the spread of the gospel is not some fortunate coincidence that just happens to spread, but it is God's deliberate plan. And it continues to be God's deliberate plan even today. Even in this world, in this city, in this suburb right now, God still wants to reach people with the good news setting circumstances up for people to meet Jesus. I heard a story of a teenager recently who um, he was telling me about how he became a Christian. And he used to be, when he was kind of in primary school, a bit of a loose unit. He would get in trouble sometimes. And so one time he was forced to clean up this room after a meeting. And that room just happened to be used by the lunchtime Christian group. And as he was cleaning the room, the projector happened to be on, and it happened to have a Bible verse on there. And he was cleaning, and he looked up and saw this Bible verse and thought, huh, that's interesting. And so the next week, he comes along to the Lunchtime Christian group. And then I'm sitting there with him years later, and he's still a part of Lunchtime Christian groups, and he believes Jesus, he loves Jesus, and he's actually helping other people to know Jesus too. I just think that, that that's an awesome story of God just placing him in that specific moment to read that verse on the screen. And it, it's happened this week. We've found members of our team in specific places on the footpath to chat to people and invite them into church who seem keen. The, a law student at the moment just happened to talk with the only lawyer trained on our team who seemed keen to come along to the launch this afternoon. God is still actively at work in this world to bring people to Himself. That's how God's mission succeeds, by His Spirit at work. Next we see, who is this mission for? The story shows us that it is for all kinds of people. 
And we see one of them in verse 27. So Philip started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. Philip meets a man who embodies the outsider in multiple ways. First of all, this man is an Ethiopian. And back in that day, Ethiopia was considered kind of the ends of the earth, like they didn't have a sense that they lied anything beyond Ethiopia. Next, this man was a eunuch. A eunuch, in the most direct sense, is somebody who has been castrated. They can't have kids, they can't have a family. And as such, they were placed in high positions of society to look after um, things there. This is someone who is sexually atypical, not fitting within the societal norm of having a family. Thirdly, this man is a financial treasurer of a country. He is in such a high position back in Ethiopia, such a high status, not any common man. So in three ways, we see that this man is an outsider. He's very different from someone like Philip which of course reminds us that God's mission is for all kinds of people. There is not, think about it, there is not a single person walking along King Street right now that is excluded from God's mission. I've lived in Newtown the past three years while at college. This week as a team, we've been on the streets, we've been interacting with all sorts of different people in Erskineville. We've met older women, we've met younger men, people from Asia, Europe, South America. We've met people who work in big corporate jobs who work from home. We've met people who are out doing labor. We've met people in run-down houses. We've met people who live in million-dollar townhouses, people who identify as LGBTQ, people who were really happy to see us and knew the church already, people who wanted nothing to do with us and shut the door in our faces. We've met people with dogs. Actually, we've, we've met a lot of people with dogs. It turns out there are a lot of dogs in Erskineville. We've met people with kids. We've met people with our kids. There are all sorts of people living around us and not one of them, not a single one, is beyond God's reach. Do you believe this? Do you believe that there is not a single person who God cannot reach where they are? Do you believe this about your neighbours, the people who you interact with every day? Maybe people who you've written off, people who you think would have no interest in church or Christianity, Do you believe that God can work in their hearts by His Spirit? They may be asking big questions in life. They may be going through something that as you have loved and cared for them, God is placing you in that moment to be able to introduce them to Jesus. This story this morning shows us that God's mission is for all kinds of people. Well, we've spoken a lot so far about God's mission. It's probably helpful to actually say, what is God's mission? What is it? Well, here's this guy, an outsider, coming back from worshipping in Jerusalem, although we know from Deuteronomy 23 verse 1 that he wasn't actually allowed to gather and assemble together inside the temple because he was a eunuch. And he happens to be reading from this section in Isaiah about this mysterious figure, and so he invites Philip up into the chariot. And Philip is there, ready to introduce the man to who this mysterious figure actually is. Who is this figure who was humiliated and slaughtered? Who is this figure who has no descendants to speak of? I mean, it's easy to see why the eunuch would want to know who this mysterious figure is, wouldn't he? Like, it makes sense because the eunuch doesn't have any children. And here is this passage talking about this man who has been humiliated and who has no descendants to speak of. 
And here is this figure presented in Scripture. Naturally, he asks Philip, tell me, please, who is this man? And then we get, we get these marvelous words in verse 35, which tell us what God's mission is. Verse 35, then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. This is what it was all leading to. God planned for this Ethiopian eunuch to meet Jesus. This is God's mission. This Ethiopian eunuch read in the Scripture, this man who was crushed so that we would not be crushed. He was humiliated so that we would not be humiliated. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter so that we, the wayward sheep, could go free, pouring out His life so that we might live. This figure is Jesus, and it all made sense to the man. He met Jesus and he believed, although we see that he doesn't physically meet Jesus, he doesn't meet him face to face like so many others did uh, with Jesus, didn't see him in person, didn't feel the nail-scarred hands, but he met Jesus in the Scripture, in words written long ago, and Philip came along and pointed him, this figure is Jesus. Brothers and sisters, that, that should give us great confidence in the words we have written in the Bibles before us. It should give us great confidence, shouldn't it? That these are the very words of God. They have stories about what Jesus did, who He is. They have eyewitness proof of people seeing the resurrected Jesus. Letters describing the impact that Jesus had on the churches. We can trust that as people read these words in the Bible, that God's Spirit will be at work. It's the story of so many people. One of my best mates now, this is his story. As he left high school, he wanted nothing to do with Christianity. It was the last thing on his mind. He was just seeking a good job, having some fun with mates. And then he had a Christian in his life who was willing to go beyond that social awkwardness and encouraged him to read the Bible. And my mate sat down with the Bible open and he read. And as he read the Bible, he realized who Jesus was. And as he was reading the Bible, he stopped and he prayed in his heart and he believed. And he was saved. It wasn't because of some big evangelistic event, though that's great. It wasn't because of a conversation that he was persuaded from the person speaking, though that's really helpful sometimes. But for him, it was as he just sat down with the Bible and he just read and he met Jesus. We, read, we heard from Rosie just before that it was as she re- heard and read those words from Romans 5, 8, that that hit home for her. The words in the Bible are powerful. Do you have someone in your life who you can be inviting to read the Bible with you? Do you have someone that you can invite to sit down, maybe over a coffee, maybe over a beer at the pub, to just sit down and read a couple of chapters of the Gospel together, maybe the Gospel of Mark? Think, who could that be? Who could you invite to sit down and read these powerful words of God together? that we would push through that that social awkwardness and and invite people to do that. And we we do that because of where it leads. That brings us to our fourth point this morning, our fourth and final point, where does all this lead? In the most immediate sense, it leads to a river because this man's so excited that he just wants to be baptised right away. For Philip, this leads somewhere else. He is taken away immediately, but this man doesn't care. What does the story say that he does? Well, the eunuch did not see Philip again, but he went on his way 
rejoicing. This is the end result for this outsider, that he went home with joy in his heart. Happy, glad, filled with joy. This is where God's mission leads to time and time again. We see it in the Gospels. People meet Jesus and they are filled with joy because they realize who he is. And even today when people meet Jesus, when they they know who Jesus is, people walk away rejoicing. Why is that? Well, because people are moved from the outside in. They are welcomed into God's kingdom as sons and daughters dearly loved. If this eunuch kept on reading, which I suspect that he did, three chapters later, only three chapters later, he would have found these words. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. But God says, I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. This is such a beautiful picture, isn't it? An outsider brought into God's kingdom, finding a home, finding a family that will endure forever. He has been brought into God's kingdom, no longer excluded, but welcomed with open arms. This is such good news, isn't it? This is such good news because we live in a world that is filled with so much pain, with so much uncertainty. You just have to look at the news to see what is going on in the world out there and we just have to look at ourselves and those around us to see the pain, to see the the anger and the hurt, to see grief and loss, to see fear and anxiety. We see all of these, these things in our broken world. It is so easy to look around and see that this world is not as it should be. But as we meet Jesus as we see who Jesus is, who faced humiliation, who faced injustice, who faced death. Jesus, who is the slaughtered lamb. Well, we see that his death means life for us. And we are included in his kingdom. A kingdom that can never be shaken. A kingdom where there is no more mourning or crying or pain. A kingdom that never ends. That is what this Ethiopian eunuch is brought into. That is what we are brought into. And it leads to a joy that is far greater than anything this world has to offer. I wonder, do you have this joy today? Do you have this joy? If you don't, like we've already spoken about, a great place to read is the Bible. Get your hands on a Bible and open up, start reading Mark's Gospel. If you do have this joy already, well, are you helping others to find this joy? Look at what Philip does. Straight after this happens, this this incredible thing, what does Philip do? Well, Philip's already on to the next place. He's already gone to help other people find joy. He wants other people to meet Jesus and receive joy. As we finish up, I'm going to pray in a second that that we would be swept up in God's mission. As we've seen this morning, God's plan is for all kinds of people to meet Jesus and rejoice whether you are like Philip, who helps other people to meet Jesus and rejoice, or whether this morning you are like that Ethiopian eunuch who meets Jesus and leaves with joy in his heart. This is God's mission. Will we be a part of it? Let's pray and ask that we would.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that his death means life for us, that as we believe in him, we are brought into your kingdom, brought in from the outside, and we are welcomed by you. Heavenly Father, may we see your mission clearly. Please, Lord, help us to know Jesus, to help other people know Jesus, and that in doing so, we would have joy and those around us would have joy. Lord, we ask for your Spirit to be at work in us, in our words, in our actions, in our heart. Lord, we ask this because we are not strong enough. We need your help. Please, Lord, help us. Fill us with this joy. And we ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Friends, what a privilege it is to have been given this joy and yet how, how easy it is for us to take that for granted. Uh, one of the ways that we can remind us of this is to say the words of Scripture to one another and to ourselves. And so now, we're going to move to, uh, to saying a psalm together. And the psalm for today, we're going to start uh, all saying it together um, in the bold, then I'll say the middle part, and then I invite you at the end again to uh, lift up your voices in joy, particularly in that last part. So friends... Let's say this psalm together. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Sing day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will come to the righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Amen. We're going to continue rejoicing, and we're going to do that in song now. So as we sing the words of amazing grace together, can I invite you to stand and uh, sing these words in your hearts. Thanks. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind.
days to sing God's praise. Then when we first begun. Well, friends, we're just about at the end of our service this morning. Um, love you to stick around, have a cuppa, and have a chat. Now let me send you out with these words from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.